Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to sing the hymn, or rather the chorus, Jubilate, everybody. Jubilate, everybody, serve the Lord in all your ways and come before his presence. that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Father eternal, giver of light and grace. We have sinned against you and our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out of darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. We're going to sing the canticle, the Peruvian Gloria. Join in with the bits you know, it's very easy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the
whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us the children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves, even as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. It is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them, and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I've made five more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I've made two more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So, take the talent from him, and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'm sure we're very familiar with that story, a story which usually goes under the title of the parable of the talents. Jesus tells a story about the man who goes on a long journey and entrusts part of his wealth to his slaves. Now it struck me, as I was reading that afresh, that we almost always read it from the perspective of the slave owner. We see Jesus teaching as a calling to us to use wisely and responsibly all the gifts that God has given us. To be faithful stewards, in other words, of all that God has entrusted to us. Not hiding our gifts away. Not hiding them under a bushel or burying them in the ground like the man in the story. But rather using them. Using them to God's glory. And I guess this is a good and faithful reading, reflecting the teaching in the parable. However, 
it's also possible to read the parable from the perspective of the slaves. For what is said, or sometimes what is implied by the slaves, show us something of how they perceive God. The slaves with whom we might find ourselves most closely identifying might tell us something about how we too perceive God. Do we see God as something of a risk taker, unafraid of failure, who trusts us but is full of compassion and grace? This attitude implied, I think, by the actions of the first two slaves. Or do we see God in the words of the third slave? Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. Afraid. Are we afraid of God? If we see God in the same sort of way that the third slave does, how does our fear keep us from acting in the work of the kingdom of God, in the great rebuilding of creation to which God calls us? The implication is that fear can cause us to stagnate and worry, to play safe rather than to take risks. Fear can cause us to dwell on our inadequacy, our unworthiness, rather than focusing upon the gracious, loving call of God. Someone once said, God doesn't call the qualified, but rather God qualifies the called. Think about when Jesus called those first disciples he didn't begin by asking to see their qualifications, their diploma in mission and ministry. He called them just as they were. Unworthy and unprepared as they probably felt themselves to be. And they learnt on the jobs. By taking risks with Jesus, making mistakes sometimes, but persevering. Will you let go of your fear, follow Jesus, and together join him in the work of the kingdom of God? I love the last verse of the hymn, which we'll sing at the end of the service, or I'll sing for you, you can come along. The hymn, Jesus Christ is Waiting. It was written by John Bell of the Iona community. And it sums up what it means to walk by faith rather than by fear. Jesus Christ is calling, calling in the streets. Come and walk faith's tightrope. I will guide your feet. Listen, Lord Jesus, let my fears be few. Walk one step before me. I will follow you. Amen. Let's affirm our shared faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, for you have given us all talents and abilities. You've created each of us in a unique way, that we may give our own unique service and talents to you. Lord, giver of all good gifts, we give you thanks for all that you have given us. May we, your people, share our talents and use them to the benefit of others and for your glory. We pray especially for all who tell others of your love and proclaim the gospel. And we ask your blessing upon all who minister to the needs of others. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord, giver of all good gifts, we ask your blessing upon all artists, musicians, craftspeople, gardeners, architects, politicians, teachers and scientists, and all who use their gifts to improve our world and improve human lives. Pray especially at this time for those scientists seeking to find ways of controlling and curing the coronavirus pandemic which is so much afflicting our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, giver of all good gifts, bless us and our loved ones and all those amongst whom we live day by day. Grant that our homes and our communities may be places where talent is fostered and given the chance to grow. We ask your blessing upon all schools, colleges, universities, training courses, places of learning and all who help others to develop their skills. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, giver of all good gifts, we ask your blessing upon all who are thwarted in their abilities through illness, oppression or the lack of opportunity. We remember before you all those who are suffering at this time, especially those who once again are feeling isolated and lonely, cut off from family and friends. And by name we pray for any who are known to us. We name them in our hearts and lift them to God, any who are special need of our prayers. mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, giver of all good gifts, we thank you for the gift of life eternal. We rejoice in the fellowship of all your saints and ask your blessing upon our loved ones departed, that they may find themselves at home with you in your kingdom of love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So let us offer ourselves afresh in the service of Christ, as we say together. Eternal God and Father, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We're going to sing the hymn, Jesus Christ is Waiting.
peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ.